Make sure to use code BANGLE at sign up on FanDuel for a $20 deposit bonus and check out my second channel for other games coming up like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops 4 as well as my third channel with collaborations with some of your favorite YouTubers. Let's get into the video. What's going on guys? Bangle again here coming back at you with another video. Today, doing something a little bit different. Of course, if you you know are a long time Madden follower, you know um, I do some rebuilds on that game. But... I'm also a gigantic college football fan, and I've never attempted one of these on NCAA uh, in a video. So, figure, why not give it a shot? I am a Texas Longhorns fan, so why not start with them during my 25 days of rebuilds on this channel? Uh, if you guys are new here, I would appreciate you subscribing. Give me a chance, and uh, let's go ahead and begin this Texas Longhorns dynasty. It's going to be one episode, trying to rebuild them over a few seasons, get them back. And hopefully in contention for a national championship. Texas is back. So this one's not going to be incredibly difficult considering that we are starting with a six-star prestige program. So it's going to be a lot easier to recruit superstar players here. But um, let's go ahead and get it going. Obviously, since 2009 in the national championship where Colt McCoy went down uh, and Alabama walked away with that one. It was just, it was unfair, man. And then in 2010, Texas went 5-7, and seven, followed up by 8-5, and five, then a 9-win season, and it seems like Texas has been in that kind of 8-10 to 10 win range over the past few seasons. We're going to see if we can right the wrong um, that, you know, with Charlie Strong, excuse the rhyme, and now that Tom Herman's here, um, seems like it program's moving in the right direction, but let's go ahead and just focus totally on recruiting. And uh, we'll see what we can do. So not really sure what I want this uh, this dynasty to be. Or how I want to do it for the format. I don't know how much recruiting I'm going to show. It's going to be a lot of simulating, of course. Um, I don't really know how we're going to do this. I mean, we're off to a good start with uh, sorting by guys who have top five interests in Texas. And minimum caliber of four star. And there are some really, really good players in here as I'm sure will be a shock to no one. And I think we're gonna add pretty much every one of them to the board, all but 10. Why not focus on the top guys? We haven't even taken a look at the roster yet, but of course we do have Sam Ellinger and Shane Buchel. A lot of people say Ellinger, but uh, it's not, it's Ellinger. And I was saying Ellinger all of last season, of course when he was a freshman, but I hear it's actually Ellinger. And then they, they say it wrong on every broadcast, as far as I've heard. So maybe maybe I've heard incorrectly, who knows. Uh, at running back, it's clearly been kind of weird over the past couple seasons. Keontae Ingram has kind of emerged as that guy. We'll have to see. I think we're probably going to redshirt him and just run with Trey Watson and Daniel Young. And then at quarterback, uh, we're going to redshirt one of these guys. I think it's probably going to be Casey Thompson. And then we'll go to wide receiver. Of course, Colin Johnson and little Jordan Humphrey has proven to be our uh, little Jordan Humphrey's proven to be one of the best wide receiver combos in the entire Big 12. And then Devin Duvernay gets targeted actually like a lot. Ellinger throws a ball to him so often. And of course, Gerard Hurd, former four-star quarterback recruit turned wide receiver. Uh, and we have a lot of freshman receivers. Alvante Woodard is supposed to be really, really good. We're going to go ahead and redshirt him. We're going to redshirt every one of these guys, actually. All of our freshman receivers. I think we're going to be fine. Actually, Joshua Moore can play. I don't really see him being a huge difference maker for us. But you never know. Um, really just like to redshirt the freshman. We'll redshirt Malcolm Epps, you know, because we get him for another year. We'll see how that goes. I'm not really sure how long this is going to be. As we'll redshirt Rafidi Yermai. Uh, I think we're fine at center. We are going to redshirt Junior Engelau. At right tackle, Reese Moore. Left end, we're going to have a, a loaded roster. I think we're fine here. At right end, I think we're fine. Charles Amena, who has been incredible for Texas this year, taking his game to another level. We're going to redshirt Keandre Coburn. At left outside linebacker, um, I think we're fine for there for right now. Middle linebacker, we're fine. Anthony Wheeler's been great. Jeffrey McCulloch's been all right. Uh, and then at right outside linebacker, Gary Johnson really has been the best player on the Texas defense so far this year. It's a shame he's a senior and that we're going to lose him. And then Chris Boyd is continuing to be the most overrated player in college football. I don't even think he's particularly good at all. 
and we don't really have a lot of uh, cornerbacks at all on the roster, only five. I don't really know if I can afford to redshirt any. Brandon Jones has been all right, but really it's been B.J. Foster who seems to be the biggest playmaker uh, at free safety. But that's not to mention, we're going to redshirt him, by the way. Um, it really has been Caden Stearns, who we are going to redshirt. He's been the best player on this Texas defense um, outside of Gary Johnson. But he's just been so good, so, so talented. Uh, he'll likely be an All-American, in my opinion. Um, and DeMarion Overshown, or DeMarvion, we're going to go ahead and redshirt as well. I think we're fine. Cameron Dicker, the kicker, and Ryan Bushevsky, who's actually uh, former Texas great punter Michael Dixon's cousin, I believe. He's actually from, I believe, Australia, not Saskatoon, Canada. But those are going to be our red shirts. And the 360 couldn't handle it and froze. Great. I think next time I do this, I'm going to award my coach... Uh, like level 37 max level right now I started from level zero which would be a huge mistake so too hard for you now I didn't want to redshirt anybody anyway we're not gonna do that we're just gonna go ahead and uh, we're just gonna start the season so we've offered scholarships to a lot of these players I'm not really sure how to best utilize these points with only 5,000 to start uh, so we just kind of put you know all our eggs in a bunch of different baskets and we didn't really go too hard on any one recruit. So that's where we are for right now. Uh, we're obviously going to simulate. And let's go to... Um, let's go to week 8. I probably could have taken a nap during this time period. Number 7 Oklahoma goes down at the hands of the Texas Longhorns. We're going to cancel the simulation and hop in. Check on recruiting. Maybe uh, remove some players from our board, see who's commit uh, to the Texas Longhorns, and maybe try to go after some new guys with low lock percentage. Who has committed? Level 9 now. That's what I like to see. Uh, we have one commit. Anthony Manning, a punter, chose Oklahoma. That's your loss. We only have one guy that has committed in that time period. That's only our third consecutive win. Who do we lose to? We're 5-1. and one, Not bad. Ranked number 20. Honestly, probably should have gone up more than, more than five spots after a win over number 6 Oklahoma. Or number 7 Oklahoma, whatever they were, when we were already a top 25. And we're 5-1. and one. Big week 11 game against number 3 West Virginia at West Virginia. This would elevate us for sure to the conference championship with a win. And we go down to the hands of the Mountaineers. 29-20. Tough loss, but certainly not out of the race for the conference championship. We've beaten Oklahoma. This is exactly what's happened this year to Texas. <laughs> win over Oklahoma. Great record. Lost to West Virginia. Hopefully, you don't go down to Oklahoma State if they're still on the schedule. And there they are. Is this the actual schedule? Nah, we played Kansas. Well, well actually, wait. I forgot Baylor was in between Oklahoma State game. And we lose to Oklahoma State. Just like real life. I hate this game. So we're 7-3 and three right now. Not terrible. Seems like it's been kind of typical of Texas. A win over Baylor in week 15 might put us in a conference championship position. I can tell you that we definitely have qualified for a bowl game. Like that, that much is obvious. You can see the record 7-3. and three. So I think that much should have been clear. We do have some new commits. Also been locked out by some others. But I think we're getting some really good players onto the team. We've already had a bunch of players commit already. So we're in a really good spot. A bunch of finalists for a bunch of different awards. Which is really awesome. And as you can see, we've signed a 5-star prospect. But we are 8-3, and three, number 17 in the country. All we have to do is take down Baylor, and uh, that shouldn't actually be too difficult. So some players that I wanted to get, you know, we fell out of a uh, position to get them, like Peter Cunningham, 78 overall, 5-star athlete, went to Bama instead. But we did sign a lot of players. Cedric Taylor, 66 overall, cornerback, Micah Stevenson, Brandon Davenport, a wide receiver. We got Marvin Black, 5-star receiver, one of the best in the country possession style and he is a very solid player from what we can see 
of uh, his overall. He's a five star. He might not actually be sick. I thought I scouted him more so than I did. But uh, there he is, 100% scouted, still 75 overall. So we did well with that one. Nick Warren, four star athlete, four star middle linebacker, and James Parker, 78 overall. Someone I really wanted to get, and we'll scout him fully. Goes down to a 77, still no big deal. Still a really, really solid player. Ryan Falk, four star cornerback, four star receiver, and Chris Wiggins. Three-star quarterback in Chuck Griffin, but he's actually not terrible. Um, he actually might be terrible. But yeah, he's, he's absolutely terrible. Doesn't matter. Uh, and then Anthony Williams. I didn't scout these players all the way. I kind of forgot along the course of it. Uh, but we got Anthony Williams, Dwayne Weatherford. These are decent players. Guys that I probably will look to redshirt if my console doesn't freeze. And then uh, play later. David Simpson's kind of like the last player I'm really going after. And uh, I'm pretty positive that he's going to sign with us. We'll see how good he actually is. 74 overall, I'll take that. Not the fastest player, but a great receiver. Um, Four-star player out of Walla Walla, Washington. <laughs> what a name. What a name for a location. And uh, J.R. Sanders is a player that we're probably not going to be able to get. He's a four-star athlete. Likely he's going to go to another Big 12 school, and that is West Virginia. But yeah, Brian Jensen, he's kind of my top priority right now. 76 overall, as far as we know. Yeah, 76 overall. Four-star tackle. That's a player I'd really like to get. But it's, it's been a decent recruiting class for us. Not exceptional, but it's been pretty good. Crush Baylor in week 15. Do we have a shot at the conference championship? What are we going to be, 10-3? and three? Or, what, 9? I think 10-3. No, 9-3, and three. all right. Didn't know it was counting for the, uh, the bowl games, but of course, don't have that yet. We didn't make the conference championship, and uh, we finished the season 9-3. and three. Let's go ahead and advance to bowl season. See what bowl game we got, and then maybe we'll check over the stats of the season. It's actually funny, because Texas is 9-3 and three right now, facing Oklahoma in the conference championship. But Eric Williams of Mississippi State wins the Heisman. Guys like uh, Ryan Finley, Divino Zigbo there. Some names you might recognize, but not a lot of like top schools there. Kind of weird. See Mississippi State, like they're, yeah, they're good, but you don't see any Alabama, you don't see any Oklahoma, you don't see any LSU or Georgia. It's Georgia Tech, North Carolina State, NC State, Tulane, and Nebraska. It's kind of weird. Speaking of which, we face Nebraska in the Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl. All right. Well, are we number 17 or number 16? <laughs> It says 17, and then it says number 16 down there below. Uh, we're not going to be playing this game. We are better than Nebraska, and I imagine we're going to win. Let's go ahead and check out the stats before we go into the bowl game. Sam Ellinger, 69. Nice. In <laughs> yards. Um, but he was okay. 20 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. Not spectacular. Rushing. Um, Ellinger had a ton of attempts. He was actually pretty good. And then... All the running backs really split carries big time. Kanta Ingram had six touchdowns, average 5.3 on the ground, which was pretty nice. Receiving, Colin Johnson, eight touchdowns. Damn, Andrew Beck actually played pretty well. Devin Duvernay, only 18 catches. Lil Jordan Humphrey, only 12 catches. Kind of weird numbers. Blocking, a lot of pancakes. Not a lot of sacks given up. That's pretty nice. And then defensively, uh, Malcolm Roach led our team in tackles with 91. Tackles for loss, he had 22, 15 for Charles Amenahu, 13 for Chris Nelson. Amenahu also led our team in sacks with six. Interceptions, six for Chris Boyd, five for P.J. Locke. Devontae Davis had four. How about forced fumbles? A bunch of players had one. Three recoveries for P.J. Locke, two for Brandon Jones. And then any defensive touchdowns? Yeah, a lot. P.J. Locke had two, and then one for Gary Johnson. Did we have any All-Americans? Yeah, we had one P.J. Locke, All-American first team. Second team, and we didn't really play a lot of freshmen, but we might have had somebody in there. Nobody on the second team. And then as far as freshmen go, we did have the punter, Ryan Buschewski, as an All-American. Not bad. Any award winners in here? Get uh, Roach in there at number 10 for the Bronco Nagurski Award. No one for the O'Brien, no one for the Joke Walker. Fred Boletnikoff, nothing there. Andrew Beck, number 9. For the John Mackey Award, Outland, nobody. 
Remington, nobody. Lombardi, nobody. Best linebacker, Malcolm Roach at number five. Ooh, Jim Thorpe. We got P.J. Locke at number four. Lou Groza, Ray Guy, Bushevsky at number two. Best returner, we have Brandon Jones at number seven. And, uh, yeah, a little bit lackluster, but I think we're going to rebound in year number two and do a lot better than nine and three. I'm looking for, like, an 11-win season. Maybe Oklahoma State gets lucky. <laughs> Again, beats us, but we should be able to hang with Oklahoma and West Virginia. We'll see how good their classes were, I guess, as we beat Nebraska. Only 35-28, but a win is a win. Congratulations, Texas has won the Buffalo Wild Wings. That's the name of the trophy. No, we just we, we played the bowl game against Nebraska to win actual Buffalo Wings from B-Dubs. Honestly, pretty good reward. 10-3 and three is our final record on the season. Let's go ahead and advance to the end of the season and then the offseason. Been locked out by a lot. No one particularly amazing. We already knew about a lot of those. So not exactly a bounce back season, but I mean, I'll take 10 wins for season one. Kind of a preliminary start. 10 wins. All right. That's cool. I'm looking now for 11, 12, 13 maybe. We'll have to see. An undefeated season would be awesome, but we're just not there yet, clearly. We don't have a QB. Well, I don't know. Maybe Ellinger. We'll see. So players leaving is actually going to hit us pretty hard. Colin Johnson goes to the draft. Chris Boyd goes to the draft. Can you imagine Chris Boyd getting taken in the second round? Yeah, okay. Malcolm Roach gone. Gary Johnson gone. Brecken Hager gone. Patrick Vahe gone. These are gigantic losses. Calvin Anderson graduating. We're losing a lot of really good players for us. Devontae Davis is a senior. Anthony Wheeler, senior. P.J. Locke. All these guys leaving. I'm kind of surprised guys like Anthony Wheeler and P.J. Locke aren't in consideration for being drafted. Even Charles Amenahu. I feel like he could probably... He's definitely going to get drafted this year, I'd say. Kind of weird, but very sad. <laughs> Losing a bunch of talent. See draft results. Who got drafted? Chris Boyd went in the second. Brecken Hager in the third. Gary Johnson in the third. Colin Johnson in the fourth. And Vahe Roach and Amedhu in the fifth, in the sixth, in the sixth. What about transfer requests? Who's leaving? We're actually gaining someone. Kevin Nelson, a freshman from UTSA. Uh, I mean, like, all right, I guess. I didn't see anyone in players leaving for uh, transfer requests, so I guess we're not losing anyone via that. Good to hear. All right, recruiting here. Final step, we have 15,000 points to try and bring in some players who are on the fence. And since there aren't like a ton of really high overall players here, we can just kind of go all out. Because we got a pretty good recruiting class overall. Including a five-star receiver, Marvin Black, from Chino Valley, Arizona. We can just kind of just go all out on the top players. This is the way I am uh, sorting these points. I'd like to make a play for J.R. Sanders. I guess we don't really... We could figure out about him. It wouldn't take that much. And then it might be able to save us some points. All right, we'll see how good he is. 77? Yeah, he's a player I want, for sure. Stephen Hayes, we can take points away from him. He's not anything special. This is why scouting is so important. 77 overall gem for Tom Lewis. He's a player that... We really need to get over Oklahoma. Especially now. And Casey Jones... Shout out to the Grateful Dead. I'd be very grateful if he signed the University of Texas. He looks like a beast. So, I'm honestly out on Stephen Hayes at this point. We have a good lead over uh, Northern Illinois, but I don't really care to get him. Because we do already have some good running backs. So, I'm going to go all in on some of these gems. Alright, this is actually how it's going to look now. Wish me luck. We'll see what happens. I doubt we get all of them, but that would be really nice. Big national signing day. We got Tom Lewis. We got J.R. Sanders. We got Casey Jones. We missed out on Brian Jensen, which kind of sucks. But I think we did pretty well overall. We got some of our top guys and, and some really bad players. Um, David Simpson went to South Carolina. But Casey Jones, J.R. Sanders, and Tom Lewis. This was a pretty good class. 
Top five class. Top class in the entire Big 12. We did all right. We were way behind on Brian Jensen. Wisconsin kind of came out of nowhere and got him. It was between really Texas and Florida State. And they just swooped in. Missed David Simpson by a lot. That's all right. Right, Randy Pierce, we were... This was a while ago. Kimbro went to LSU. Stephen Hayes, we missed out on by 280 points, but he wasn't an exceptional player. I probably should have taken everything out of him. I think we did very well overall. We had a really, really good class. UTSA wasn't even close. I didn't want to play it, um, like, risky, though. I wanted to get who I wanted to get. I didn't want, you know, to risk any of these players going anywhere else. Oklahoma was super close to stealing Tom Lewis, and I just could not let that happen. He was a player that we absolutely needed to bring into the Texas Longhorn uh, family. We have no players in the 90s right now, and that will change. As guys now like Lil Jordan Humphrey, they're seniors. He'll probably be close to a 90 overall. I just swallowed weird. It made a really odd noise. Uh, but we're going to change the position on some of these athletes. J.R. Sanders, big commit. Nick Warren, big commit. Gem of Casey Jones was a really, really cool find. We'll have to see where a lot of these players fit. He's not a quarterback. 76 running back. Uh, he could play free safety for us. I think cornerback could be a fun home. Yeah, he's going to play cornerback. Right, J.R. Sanders. Well, let's check what they're good at first. So he's super fast. Can you throw, though? He, he's probably a, he looks like a wide receiver. He could be a quarterback, but I think we're going to play him at wide out. 77 overall wide receiver. Not great on defense. How do we look at wide receiver right now, though? We have a lot of talent there. I really think we'd be best playing him at corner. Or excuse me, not quarter. At quarter. Quarterback. So J.R. Sanders is going to play QB. Nick Warren looks like a wideout or an average running back. Um, he's going to be 74, 75. Um, yeah, he's halfback or running back or wide receiver. I feel like just because we don't have a lot of running back depth, we're going to go ahead and play him at running back. So that, those are the athletes dealt with. It's really annoying I couldn't redshirt any of my players without my PS... Or it's not a PS4. Uh, without my Xbox 360 freezing. That really frustrates me. But kind of is what it is. We're done with the position changes. Let's go ahead and see how much these players improved. Shackelford went up a ton. Zach. Hope that's annoying. Uh, Zach Shackelford goes up to a 96. Brandon Jones up to a 92. I guess he's going to play a lot. Caden Stearns goes up to a 90. We've seen so much improvement here. Devin Duvernay up. Really excited about Caden Stearns. Um, who are the youngest players who are the best? A lot of seniors, a lot of juniors, and then Caden Stearns kind of fits in there. Keontae Ingram's up a lot, as is Daniel Young. Bushevsky goes up a ton. We did really, really well here. At quarterback, Duchelle and Ellinger are fighting. And then there's Casey Thompson. We redshirt him. He goes up just a little bit. Halfback, great improvement here. Keontae Ingram is just... He's got to be the guy over Daniel Young. He's just better. At wide receiver, great stuff here. Good to see it. Avante Woodard, I'm going to want to get a, a lot of touches. We got a lot of freshman receivers, though. Or, well, redshirt freshman receivers at this point. Um, I guess it did let me redshirt a few of these guys. I thought, I don't know. It, that was weird what happened. Um, we're good at tight end. Our offensive line's fantastic. Germani or Girmai, excuse me, went up quite a bit. And then Zach Shackelford's just going to be a beast. And then Samuel Cosby's going to take his place. He's pretty young right now. A lot of really good stuff. We're really weak at defensive end. That's going to be a huge point of emphasis for me going into uh, this next recruiting class. However, a lot of these guys are young, like at left end. Those guys are sophomores and a redshirt sophomore. 
So they will be able to play with us for at least two more years if they uh, if they decide to do that and not go anywhere else. So we did do really well. Jeffrey McCulloch is a senior. He's up to an 89. We had some really, really good guys in place. Need to get better at cornerback. That's another priority. And then at safety, we're pretty unbelievable. Brandon Jones going up to a 92 is insane. And then Caden Stearns is looking like he's going to be a 99 overall. So we are in business. We have to cut five guys. Burgers and fries. That fullback's going to have to stay on the lineup or stay on the team, unfortunately. Um, minimum position requirements are frustrating. We cut this bust. All right, see you later. Another bust. See you later. Chuck Griffin ended up being a huge bust. That's unfortunate, but see you later. Um, we have a lot of receivers, so... Brandon Davenport is going to go. And then our last cut is going to be... Let's see here. Da uh, Patrick Humphrey. Kind of a no-brainer on that one. Not going to touch custom conferences. We're headed to the preseason. And I really think we could be in position for 11, 12, maybe even 13 wins. Let's see if we can redshirt players now. That'd be great. J.R. Sanders. Definitely want a redshirt. Fine at running back. Wide receiver. I definitely want a redshirt Marvin Black. For sure. Um, let's see. What else? Where do we have just an influx of players that we aren't going to need? Where we don't need the depth. Uh, middle linebacker. Tom Lewis. Honestly, both of these guys should probably be redshirt. So we're going to redshirt both our middle linebackers. It's disgusting that Bryant Quinn is on the team. At cornerback, I think Casey Jones. It'd be wise to uh, redshirt both these guys, in my opinion. And then at safety, we are fine. Our schedule for the year is uh, an interesting one. Obviously, mostly Big 12 schools. West Virginia is a tough one in Week 5. Oklahoma right after that in Week 6. Kansas State is actually ranked, and they're at number 21. And, I mean, a lot of these games, even though these teams aren't ranked, Iowa State, Oklahoma State, um, even at Texas Tech could be a tough one. Like, these are all tough matchups. Versus UCLA shouldn't be too bad, but we'll have to see. And then, I don't know, Kansas is a, a bitch for some reason in the game. Uh, but yeah, this is our schedule. Hopefully, it ends with at least a conference championship. Keontae Ingram is going to start at halfback. I do want to play Alvante Woodard quite a bit. I don't know I don't know what I did with Alvante Woodard. There's no way I redshirt him. Did I redshirt Alvante Woodard? I mean, Alvante Woodard is here. It's just not letting me play him in the top five because he's not in the top five. Well, that's, I want to play him, though. <laughs> I want to play Alvante Woodard. Don't, don't do me like that game. For some reason, it's putting Jameson ahead of Alvante Woodard. So what I'm going to do is actually uh, make him a little bit worse. Turn down his awareness a bunch. And that should make him a little bit worse. Nothing crazy. Yeah, he's down to an 81. And now... I should actually be able to play Alvante Woodard, put him into the team, and actually play, which is what I want. Still no? Hold on. Let's auto reorder. There he goes. Uh, and I'm going to play him at number three, and then I'll, I'll flop him in Pouncy. And let's go ahead and, and change back the changes that I made. Make sure Ellinger's starting. And we are good to go so once again i'm going after some top guys these are the names of the players in case you are curious uh, i'm going after currently two quarterbacks and some of these guys i don't have scouted i'm going to definitely scout these guys uh running back charles goolsby i like that one a lot that name and there actually are a few really really solid players in here obviously uh this was a great one i want to get max rogers a guard already a super high overall as a freshman ricky Patton turned out to be a gem 80 overall. He's a four-star defensive end who wants to go to Texas. 
It's in the top three. He's not going to Oklahoma. Ricky Patton. We can call him General Patton. That's a fun nickname. I need this 80 overall gem to come to Texas. It is it is a must get. But I will be going uh, over scouting these players so we don't make any big mistakes. These other players. Tyrell Williams, of course. Of course, wide receiver now for the Chargers. But no, uh, these are the guys. Some good athletes in there as well. I'm going after a bunch of really, really good players, but they all have interest in Texas, so why not? Regular season time. I'll probably be going week by week, trying to recruit a lot of these guys, make sure I get who I want. Wow. Plus 10 overall gem for Ken Taylor. Is it a three-star guard? Yeah, I think we're going to need him. Ranked at number 10 right now. I mean, 1-0. Doing pretty well. I think we're going to simulate now a bit. Uh, to the West Virginia game and then we'll take it from there. We lost to Kansas. You gotta be what do you? God, dude, I told you it Kansas all the time. There's such a pain. Why? It's Kansas, man What do they have less miles there now? Jesus, we're unranked now. <laughs> we're one and two Jesus Jesus Kansas is two and one we, I, I can't, I can't believe it. It is brutal. We got to beat West Virginia. If we lose to West Virginia, I mean, our season's over. Probably. Three lost team already, one and three, and we lose to West Virginia. <laughs> one and three headed into now Oklahoma. It's going to be, it's going to be a disaster at number 12, Oklahoma. This really is our season. The rest of the schedule isn't that tough. Man. <laughs> what is happening here in year two? We lost to Oklahoma. Shocker. One and four. It's a brutal season two. <laughs> Kansas State is number four in the country. How, how did they get to number four? Of course we lost to them because we lose to everybody. We're going to lose, what, seven games this year probably? Jesus, big ranked win against Oklahoma State, but <laughs> all we can do is uh, take solace in ruining other seasons because ours went down in a blaze of fire long ago. So we went five and seven. Unbelievable. I don't even know how that happens. A little bit disappointing, but... Um, some of my recruits are going to start to play next year, so we can take solace in that. Come back, season three, go positive this time, hopefully. How do we go five and seven? We had one of the best overalls in the entire Big 12. We just lost so many matchups. Jonathan Taylor wins the Heisman. Brandon Wimbush is in there. That's crazy. So we don't qualify for a bowl because we sucked. Let's go ahead and check out our season stats. See how we didn't perform well. Ellinger, uh, kind of a mess season for a quarterback, to be honest. Rushing, I mean, Keontae Ingram was pretty good. Keontae Ingram, 879 yards, 7 TDs. His longest run was 15, yet Sam Ellinger ripped off a 60-yarder. Interesting. Lil' Jordan Humphrey was our best receiver by far. Avante Woodard was all right. Devin DuVernay. Keontae Ingram was super involved in the passing game. And the offensive line actually wasn't terrible at all. Defensively, I guess, I guess our defense really held us back. Our numbers are a lot worse than they were just a year ago. They're a lot, a lot worse. Wow. They are really, really bad in comparison to what we had. Tackles are down, which means we're allowing more uh, touchdowns in general. Caden Stearns had a uh, touchdown, which was cool. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's pretty brutal. So we don't even get a shot... At a, at a bowl game this year because we were just too terrible. And LSU is going to take on Washington in the national championship, which is pretty cool. It's an interesting matchup. Everyone's impressed with the job I've done that I've got an extension. We just went 5-7 and seven and we're the Texas Longhorns. I'd be fired immediately. <laughs> they want to offer a five-year extension. Well, okay. I mean, I'll do it. All right, we're going to have seniors leaving. I have 27 defensive coordinator upgrades. Is that true? What? Um, 
So Dwayne Weatherford is transferring. Who cares? Brandon Jones headed to the draft, as is Zach Shackelford, as is Lil Jordan Humphrey, and a bunch of other players are graduating, a bunch of seniors. Um, but overall, nobody too important. Nobody too important. I mean, we're obviously Brandon Jones, Zach Shackelford, Lil Jordan Humphrey. Those those guys hurt. Jeffrey McCulloch does as well. Uh, Devin Duvernay hurts, but. I think we got a good young core going, and somehow 27 defensive coordinator upgrades. How is that even possible? How do we have 27? Did it reset? Have I not spent any of these the entire time? No way. No, I absolutely did, because I had this maxed out. I have no idea what happened. Sure, there's an easy answer, but I don't. I don't know. And we have maxed out the defensive coordinator pretty big time anyone influential wanting to transfer obviously not no one wants to go to a five and seven texas longhorn team this is a, that was a brutal second season so we've had a really good recruiting class so far a lot of very talented players ken taylor who we wanted at the beginning of the season very grateful to add him in michael colbert 77 overall outside linebacker tj wolf toby horner pretty good you guys can see the uh caliber of recruiting with you know the stars and stuff in the overall and then eric warren kyle jordan five-star athlete jason edwards five-star athlete justin barber five-star quarterback 79 overall he's kind of a beast with 88 speed 85 throw power 78 throw accuracy pete fry decent safety and uh, now we have a lot of locked players as you'll be able to see here um but Gonna go pretty hard for Matt Walker, who we, I guess we didn't offer a scholarship on him. Whoops, he's a Juco 78 overall defensive end, junior college. How good is he actually? Oh, 81? I'm in. I'm in on Matt Walker. Michael Burke, we scouted him all the way up. I mean, we should be good to get a lot of these players. We could break these locks maybe, is that possible? We might be too late. Yeah, we're too late. It's too late in the season. I think we can do this like mid-season. Since these are the only two players I want at this point, I'm going all in on Michael Burke and Matt Walker. Matt Walker is a really cool player. Junior college transfer. Only a three-star player, but he's an 81 overall. So, super excited to add him to the Longhorn family, as I've talked about before. I think uh, it's extremely likely that he transfers in. Yeah, Matt Walker, Michael Burke, both committed. So that's big. Also, some lower-scale players that don't particularly matter but top five class again top class of the conference top five class in the nation not bad we got a lot of really really good players i wish for my ozark state actual dynasty where i play the games on my channel um you guys can check that out if you want i wish we could get any of these players that i just signed but uh, i think we were really lucky to get get this class we did really well sam ellinger is a senior now a lot of these guys are getting pretty old on this team. So we need to capitalize with a big season this time. Time to change these athletes around, see where they fit best, where they can become huge impact playmakers. Eric Warren, I'm thinking you're going to be a running back for us. That much, I mean, only 55 carrying? What are, what are you? A cornerback? This guy can do it all. Eric Warren's one of those like interesting athletes that plays every single position. Like, is he a safety? Is he a quarterback? Is he a running back? Is he a wide receiver? I almost don't want to play him at running back with 55 carry. Call me crazy. I think he's going to have to be a defensive player. So, uh... I don't know, what do we have at safety right now? Two juniors. Obviously, Caden Stearns is going to be our, our guy here for the next two years unless he declares, which hopefully he doesn't. We don't need any safeties. We do need a cornerback, so Eric Warren will be playing corner. Kyle Jordan's one of the most clear cornerbacks I've seen, so he's going to play that position as well. We have Marcus Coles and Jason Edwards. Where do these guys fit? To me, these guys are either uh, wide receivers or running backs. I mean, or I both like Coles could play quarterback too. 
But I think he'd be a uh, a better receiver. They both. I think they're both receivers. So we will make them both receivers, and we have no shortage at that position. Let's see training results. Show me some big changes. All right, so Ellinger going up to a 93 is going to be huge for his senior year. And we got a lot more players, you know, entering the 90s now. We have a really good group, to be honest. At quarterback, Ellinger's the guy. And um, Casey Thompson is probably going to be his replacement. I don't really know. Maybe Cameron Rising. It depends how much he goes up after this next year. Keontae Ingram and Daniel Young is a really good combo at running back, except for uh, Daniel Young having, oh, I don't know. 79 speed not that great a wide receiver we're we're set we are in a really really good position at tight end we're only getting better so we got a good group here um the offensive line could improve we might need to sign a tackle and by might i mean we definitely will at some point but the offensive line overall solid in fact did I miss? I think I missed position changes. We could have moved one of these guys over to left tackle. I didn't realize we were so weak at left tackle. At left end, these guys are getting better. And we're definitely going to start a rookie at this position this year. Um, I don't know. Well, I say a rookie. A freshman. Excuse me. I'm getting used to uh, Madden lingo. Um, defensive tackle. We need to bring in some more guys. The linebacking crew, pretty good. Ayo, Adioye. Pretty solid player, junior linebacker. Outside line, but dude, like we got to, I miss, I should have changed more positions. At cornerback, we're getting better. The more these guys improve, the better we're going to get. And um, the safeties are a, just an insane group of players. We got to cut eight players. Might not be the toughest thing, actually. All right, we're going to start JP Arquidez. At left tackle, it's just better overall for us. And then Matt Walker, junior college transfer, he's going to start at left end over uh, Moro Ajomo. Also, instead of... Well, actually, he's a freshman, man. We're going we're gonna to start Michael Burke. Yeah, we're going to start Michael Burke at right outside linebacker. The cornerback group is getting better. These guys are both juniors, even though Kobe Boyce is redshirt junior. He'll be eligible for next year. I doubt he's going to declare... Uh, and then at safety, we're in a great spot. We really are. Caden Stearns is a beast. And I wish we could play DeMarvion Overshone somewhere. But I don't really see where he would fit right now. All right, so this is our schedule. Do we really want to start off playing number 12 Notre Dame? Cal, Oklahoma. This is a tough schedule. Where is West Virginia? They're not even ranked anymore. How the mighty have fallen. Uh, I don't know. Do we? I kind of want to play a cupcake in week one. Actually, you know what? If we're going to play a top team, let's throw it back. Texas, Texas A&M. That's a really fun week at one game. Who do we redshirt here? Toby Horner, I guess. We're going to want these guys for another season for sure. At quarterback... Makes a ton of sense to redshirt Justin Barber. Uh, Derek Willis, I guess, doesn't really matter. And then probably both of these wideouts, to be honest. Tight end. Nobody. Ken Taylor, for sure, is getting the redshirt. And then uh, I think we're probably good apart from that. Maybe Michael Colbert will get the redshirt. I think, yeah, you probably will. And then other than that, maybe maybe a cornerback, Kyle Jordan. Yeah, it's going to be Kyle Jordan. All right, let's not, uh, let's not be terrible this year, please. And insta-commit level one. Hell yeah. It's a small percentage, but it exists now. Oh, insta-commit on Johnny Fagan. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. He's a junior college player, but he's also a 78 overall defensive tackle. So, big moves. So, we beat Rice. I'm honestly not paying that much attention because this takes an hour. 
Did we beat Texas A&M? If we did, I didn't note it. I don't know if we won or not. All right, so we lost to Texas A&M in week one. Hate to see that. Oh, insta commit. Brett Dawson, all right. We beat ranked Iowa State, 38-17. That's a pretty big win. Oklahoma's coming up pretty soon on the schedule. So we can't stop now. We just gotta keep going. Win some games. We should have given ourselves a softball week one. A&M was a tough matchup. Number 19, Cal is going to be no slouch either. This one needs to be a win as well. We beat Cal 37-33. A real close one. But that's another big ranked win. This probably would put us in the top 25. Week one loss over ranked Texas A&M in the top 15. And then wins over ranked Cal. Wins over ranked Iowa State. That's got to put us in the top 25. Number four, Oklahoma. This is the biggest game of the season. This would put us at two losses if we lose, which is not necessarily out of the, uh, the conference championship conversation. But a win here really puts us in a great position. Wins over three ranked opponents and our only loss of the season, and we lose. We get kind of crushed 52-38. Not crushed, but like multiple touchdown loss. Ah, oh, that's, that's bad. Win over Texas Tech. So that puts us at what? Four and two? Five and two? I don't remember how many bye weeks we had. Wow. Really close game again. 32-31 over TCU. A loss there would have really, really hurt our chances. Now, I swear to God, if the Kansas Jayhawks manage to beat us again, I'm going to end the video right here. None of this rock chalk BS. This is a win. A close game again, but we actually managed to beat the Kansas Jayhawks. Un unimaginable. How could any team beat Kansas? Big win over Baylor. Let's go ahead. Who do we have in week 13? Have we played Oak State yet? Might we might have the Cowboys in week 13. I don't think we played Oklahoma State. We haven't played West Virginia. I think they're week 15, if I recall. Who else have we not played the Big 12? Oklahoma State, I don't think. West Virginia. Who would week 13 or 14 then that we haven't played yet? We played Tech? I think we played Texas Tech. I don't know. We'll find out. Win over Oak State. We have two losses on the season, I believe. These two losses. Oh, hook them horns. Um, I don't think they're going to hurt us that bad. It's number 11, Texas A&M. And it's number 4, Oklahoma. We've beaten every other ranked opponent we faced, which... Has maybe just been Ohio State? Or not Ohio State. Iowa State? Not positive. So we should be like, what? Seven? Seven and two maybe right now? Six and two? I think six and two. Oh my god. Kansas State was the other one. I forgot how highly they're ranked. They're number five. If we win here, we're in the Big 12 championship. Almost for sure. If we lose, we're out of it. It's going to be Oklahoma, Kansas State, pretty much no matter what. This is a must-win game. Season on the line. Conference championship on the line, I should say. We're definitely going to qualify for a bowl either way. Moment of truth, pretty much. Can we beat the Wildcats at home? We do. 45-33, and we're probably going to the conference championship with a win over West Virginia. That's gigantic. We lost to West Virginia. It's going to be another 10-3 and three season. That's crazy, man. We clutched up so many times this year. And West Virginia beats us. They're not bad, to be fair, even though they weren't ranked. But that's, that's a really tough loss in Week 15. That might knock us out of the conference championship conversation. It might have to be K-State versus Oak State or Oklahoma at this point. It is late. I've been, I've been recording right now for over three hours. And it, all of it has been simulating in this part. That's the real, like, the bulk of it. It's brutal. I don't know how long this video is going to be. Not three hours, but that's how long I am, to, am into the recording right now. And I am brain dead, clearly. Huge commits, though. Ken Lee, Mark Britton. Ken Lee is an athlete. A lot of these guys are athletes. And we didn't qualify for the conference championship. Another 9-3. and three, That'll probably be a 10-3. and three. That's so brutal. We're number 23 right now. The West Virginia game killed us. That's so unfortunate. Can we see? I already know what the uh, 
the Big 12 championship is going to be. It's going to be Oklahoma versus West Virginia. Oklahoma finished 7-2. and two. One game above us. And the worst case state. They're number 17. We would have we would have uh, been in the conference championship. So Oklahoma is six, and then uh, the next Big Twelve team is uh, Kansas State, and they're one rank above us. We were thirteen before the loss. That's so killer. West Virginia, I, you ruined our season. Let's see what bowl we get. Is it the Cotton Bowl? That's a pretty solid bowl. Sean McGrew wins the Heisman. Good for him. You see J.K. Dobbins in there at Ohio State. And we are in the Cotton Bowl against number 17, Mizzou. We went 7-2 in conference, too. That's tough. All right, let's see if we can beat Mizzou. Yeah, we crushed Missouri. 38-7. Not even close. 10-3. Uh, you know what? Decent season. I still want an 11-win season. Next season will be the last one. We'll see. So we won the Cotton Bowl. Pretty big, pretty big bowl win, honestly. You guys know that. And we, and we crushed Missouri. So this was an emphatic win. Should put us... Uh, number 18, not bad. Should put us back somewhere in that range. I would say top 15 headed into next season. All right. Big win. This was the biggest bowl victory in the past five, six years. It, I don't even think that's that debatable. Absolutely the biggest. Especially when we smash them. 2-0 so far in bowls. So, I think we're destined for big things. We're losing a lot of big players, though, including our starting quarterback, Sam Ellinger, which is going to hurt. So, Ellinger is going to the draft. BJ Foster declared, which sucks. Jordan Pouncey declared, which sucked. We're losing a lot of really... Really good players, but Keontae Ingram's still here. Keontae, so we're fine. Anyone transferring in that won't matter? Jeremy Hall. All right, sure. Season stats, Sam Ellinger had the best year of his career by far. By far. And it's still, we, we choked when it mattered most. Keontae Ingram, I don't know how you weren't number one back, but that you needed to be. Receiving, Jordan Pouncey was unbelievable. Avante Woodard, 10 touchdowns. He's going to need to step up big time this next year. Still only a redshirt sophomore. Offensive line was good. And then defensively, things are looking better. We're getting more pressure on the quarterback. Matt Walker was awesome. And then interceptions are up. Caden Stearns had a great year. Force fumbles, nothing really notable. Uh, and then defensive touchdowns, Taquan Graham was the only one with any. Or Taquan. We had a decent class. Um... Nothing exceptional, in my opinion. Jeremy Duncan's a pretty good guard. Johnny Fagan was a good defensive tackle uh, recruit. Good Juco player. Um, but again, this was, this was our worst class so far. We got a bunch of talented athletes, though. Mark Britton, Matt Ortiz, Ken Lee, Jansen. No. Mark Britton's a five-star player as well. But um, I don't know where they're going to play yet. He looks like a running back. Mark Britton looks like a running back. I don't know why the defensive coordinator keeps resetting. I have no clue. All right, I'm going to focus a lot more on position changes this time around. All right, training results. We need big, big, big results. And I think for the most part, we got them. Caden Stearns goes up to a 97. I'm glad he's back. Let's go position by position. Cameron Rising. He's going to be a decent quarterback option for us, and we did pretty well to recruit uh, his eventual replacement, but this is the last season. Keontae Ingram is up to a 96. It's very good to see. And then wide receiver, uh, we have four really, really talented options. Joshua Moore, Alvante Woodard, Brennan Eagles, Deshaun Jameson. At tight end, two of the best tight ends probably in the country in Reese Latow and Malcolm Epps. And then at left tackle, we're all right. Left guard's pretty good. Center's awesome with Sam Cosme. Junior Angelau is fantastic at right guard. Reese Moore's a solid right tackle. Matt Walker's up to an 85 with a really good backup. Moro Ajomo is up to an 85 at right end. At defensive tackle, we have Keandre Coburn. Kevin Nelson's a decent player. He's up six overall. Defensive tackle. Joseph Asai. Byron Vaughns. All very good players in their own right. 
middle linebacker. It's up to Ayodele Edioye at middle linebacker. James Parker, solid as well. And then a right outside linebacker. I've actually moved DeMarvian Overshone from strong safety to right outside linebacker, where he's actually pretty great. Tom Lewis is in here. You guys might remember recruiting him. Michael Burke also. Uh, true sophomore, up to an 81. We have a lot of great depth. And then a cornerback. We've got the best group we've ever had with Anthony Cook, Kobe Boyce, and then Jalen Green. Good work after them with Casey Jones, who we recruited, and Ryan Falk, Kyle Jordan as well, not terrible. And then at safety, free safety, we've got Montrell Estelle, and then Caden Stearns. Josh Thompson, pretty good as well. We've got the best group we've had probably in terms of a team since we've been here. So... I expect good performance this year. 11 wins. Give it to me. Come on. Just cutting some of the players that, you know, don't matter is what it comes down to. Guys that I'm not really sure how they made the team, but they don't need to be here. All right, let's check out the schedule for the fourth and final season. It's arguably the toughest one yet. Notre Dame, then Cal, Oklahoma State, West Virginia, and Kansas State are ranked. We've got, what is that? Three, four, five ranked opponents. Arizona's ranked. Let's put Arizona on there. There's no way Arizona can be that good. And they'll beat us, though, with Khalil Tate. He's there. Let's put Missouri back on the schedule. All right, Arizona, Missouri. We need to, uh, we need to win these games. The first two are going to be tough, but strength of schedule is an A. I think we're good. I think we're a really good team. So now it's just about going out there, getting it done, making it happen. All right, we're ranked at number 15, as I said we would be, I recall. Um, CPU is gonna take care of recruiting. And uh, let's go ahead and simulate to the conference championship. Big win over Arizona week one, 45-17. That was quick. And we beat Mizzou. This time it's a closer game than the Cotton Bowl, but 21-17. We're out to a 2-0 start with the best team that we've had so far. It's encouraging to see. And those are two ranked wins. We got to be a top 10 team at this point. Let's go ahead and stop simulating for a minute and see where we stand. But starting out at number 15, two wins over top opponents, in the, or two in the top 20. That's got to be a top 10 team. We're only number 13, man. Those are, those are big wins. I think that's a pretty easy win over UTEP. Big win over Iowa State. This season's looking fantastic so far. Can't wait for Oklahoma. Red River Showdown. Here they are. Number eight, Oklahoma. The Red River Rivalry. At the Cotton Bowl. This should be a fun one. Wow. We lost by one. 38-37. But at least we know we can hang with a top 10 team. This was a one point loss. The season's far from over. We're still gonna be in great position for the uh, Big 12 Championship. Just at this point with that loss, I think the BCS National Championship, of course there's no college football playoff in NCAA 14. Uh, that's out of the, you know, off the table. But conference championship still very much in play. Just don't lose any dumb games is what it comes down to. We barely beat Texas Tech, but a win's a win. Can you imagine playing with Oklahoma, lose by one, and then only beat Texas Tech by five? That's typical Texas, to be honest. Big win over TCU, 42-21, doubling their points. Now, I swear to God, Kansas, how is Kansas scoring 45 points on our defense? We, we can't have that. We win, but, like, do we really? It's Kansas. And we beat them by a touchdown, and we allow 45 points. Shout out to the Big 12. When we lost to Baylor. You're killing me, game. Texas, why? It's Baylor. This isn't 2012 or 2011 with, when they had RG3. This is not 2011. We don't lose to Baylor. Stop. We need a bounce back win over West Virginia because I can tell you, the rankings are going to be extremely, extremely close in the Big 12 right now gonna be Oklahoma number one and then who knows where K-State, West Virginia, Texas are all ranked. This is gonna to be tough. We need to win. West Virginia's three and six as well. We're number 11 in the country. How are they? When were they 18? 
Is that the beginning of the year? Baylor's number three. They're eight and one. That's how we lost to Baylor. Oh my goodness. We're totally not going to... We're totally not going to be in the Big 12 Championship because Baylor's on one this year. What in the ass? We are a 97 overall. Oh, it was number six versus number seven. How is... Baylor's a 91, dude. Everyone else in here is a 95 to 99. <laughs> Baylor! We're seven and two. We obviously need to beat West Virginia. Uh, and Oklahoma State and can we need to win out at this point and we also need Baylor or Oklahoma to lose to have a chance Baylor especially needs to lose we barely beat West Virginia that could put us inside the top 10 yeah we're number 10 right now at Oklahoma State they're six and four why does this feel like a bad matchup we need to win we need to win so badly we beat them 37 26 it's gonna put us further inside the top 10 Oh boy, week 15, we, again, you guys are going to be so shocked by this, but we need a win. We're holding at number 10. We need, to, we need to not be there. We need to be higher. Oklahoma's number one now at nine and two. Kansas is nine and two? How is Kansas ranked above us? What do you mean? How is Kansas at number nine? <laughs> First of all, they're at 83 overall. I get they just beat Baylor. Number who's number 15 now. But okay, okay. Now I understand that. But how do they leapfrog us? How do we not move and they move up to number nine? There's who does Kansas play? I can't even believe this. We might as well just lose to Kansas State at this point. Just to end the pain. All right, conference championship potentially on the line. We beat Kansas State. However, not convincingly, I will say. We need Kansas to lose, which... Amazing it hasn't happened seven times already this year. I don't I don't know. The Big 12 is ridiculous at this point. It is just ridiculous. Oh my God, we did not qualify for the conference championship. I might do one more season. Just because, like, we're as good as we've ever been. And how do we miss it? Let's see. Wait. So we're number eight now. We finished 10 and two. Probably will be an 11 win season. We are the number one ranked team in the big 12. What is happening? Oklahoma lost to Oklahoma State and dropped to 12. What are the rankings right now? Baylor drop to uh or, well, they, they're there at 14 now. They beat West Virginia. Where's Kansas? Kansas dropped from 9 to 18 because TCU beat them. I, I am confusion. So we're the highest ranked team in the Big 12, yet we're not in the Big 12 championship? Explain this. So we're the second ranked team right now in the Big 12, despite... I mean, we've got... A worse conference record. Oklahoma lost one game, even though they finished nine and three. But why are we not in the conference? Why don't we have a bye week? Would this not be the week of the conference championship? This is. So who's in it? What's our projection looking like? The Cotton Bowl again. This time versus Bama. Yeah, bring on Bama. That's a great idea. How are I don't get why we're not in the conference championship? Is there just no Big Twelve championship? Am I? Am I smoking meth right now? Where is the Big 12 here? Is this just the way it works? Why would, uh, There is no Big 12. So there's the SEC. There's the Pac-12. There's the ACC. There's the Big 10. There's the Power 4. Where's the 5th? Where's the Big 12? They just decided it was too close. There's not going to be one this year? I'm... I have, I'm so confused as we play in the Cotton Bowl again. Alex Sinkfield from Florida Atlantic won the Heisman. All right. And, uh, yeah, bring on Bama. We're number seven right now. We're worse than Alabama is, so I, I can only imagine how this will go. 
and we beat Alabama 26-20. This final season is going to be spectacular, I think. Well, I mean, you, you always, you hope, but who's to say, really? Another Cotton Bowl added to the trophy case. Why not? And I've been offered another extension. I don't know why. We'll sign it, I suppose. But 11 wins, finally. I like that. And hopefully nobody wants to go to the draft. No one gets any ideas. Just come back to Texas. We'll be fine. All right, please just don't leave. Malcolm Epps is leaving. He's declaring. That's actually... This is fine. Ah, Caden Stearns was a senior. That's a, that's a pain. And Keontae Ingram, I... Oh, that, that's a pain. Oh, we're losing both tight ends as well. Why would you declare, Malcolm Epps? You're such a pain in the ass. Can I... Can I convince you? All right, he's coming back. Let's go, baby. I didn't mean to, like, say that. But, uh, he's staying now. So sweet. Losing Matt Walker. We're losing some really good players. But I think we do have some really good guys coming up behind. Wow, we're losing some studs. We're losing some absolute studs. This is gonna be a yikes for this season. This is gonna be a big yikes. Transfer requests don't matter. No one wants to. Alright. Recruiting, I'm simulating pass because it doesn't matter at this point. I will go to position changes, though. So we still did have a pretty good class. Um, signed some five-star players, or at least one. This was a gem. Two-star. CPU going hard. Who is the five-star player we got? So TJ Brown is a decent player. It's four-star gem, Rob Lumpkin. So, I, don't, I don't love that last name. Here's another gem, 77 overall defensive tackle, 85 kicker, James Goss, hell yeah, I'm in on that, nice gem of a kicker, 84 overall punter, I'll take that, and here's our five star, Rodney Preston, at running back, hell yeah, 81 overall freshman gem cornerback, that's what I'm talking about, we had another really, really solid class, most of this wasn't me, but we did quite well. Now, I need Casey Thompson and J.R. Sanders to get big boosts. And Taylor's going to play center for us, which is actually really, really good. And we don't have a right guard right now, really, which was my mistake. Like, Jeremy Duncan's going to be close to an 80, but is there anybody else I can move there that'll be doable or usable? Unlikely. So I've moved Byron Vaughns from outside linebacker to left end. That's going to be really good for us. And I've moved Michael Burke from left outside linebacker to right end. So now we have two better defensive ends. And at left outside linebacker, we're still going to be fine with Michael Colbert. We're still going to be fine on the inside with James Parker, Greg Bryant, who's a, um, a Juco player, junior college transfer. We're fine at middle linebacker. And then DeMarvion Overshow is still going to be great at right outside linebacker. And we have Tom Lewis, who ideally could move inside or to left outside linebacker, which would probably be his best fit. And he's even slightly higher overall. So he will start at left outside linebacker. And then at cornerback, these guys are all going to get pretty big boosts. So we'll have to see what we do here. Sammy Thompson looks like a monster. I don't know where he came from. And then we don't really have a free safety or a strong safety now. But we can move a cornerback back. So Sammy Thompson actually has great hit power. He really could play safety for us. Any of these guys could, really. Eric Warren's going to move to free safety. And then Sammy Ty, I really feel like he could play safety. But we need the cornerbacks. I might move DeMarvion Overshown back to strong safety. And I will. So DeMarvion Overshown back to, uh, back to strong safety. I might move Toby Horner to free safety. I think I will. I'm going to move Michael Colbert to right outside linebacker. All right, we're even now. A lot of position changes. Pretty good ones, though. Good punter, good kicker. And uh, do we have any athletes I can change around? I 
Kind of forgot about these guys. 90 zone coverage on Kevin Stevens. That spells safety. This is a really odd athlete. This is a really odd one because he's a better offensive lineman and defensive lineman. Ooh, Miss Center. All right, we need big training results here if we're going to, you know, capitalize again. And we get it. We get it again. Let's go position by position. J.R. Sanders will be our quarterback. 91 overall, 95 speed. Disgusting. Nick Warren, great running back, senior. And we have a good backup in Ken Lee. Fullback, doesn't really particularly matter. And then a wide receiver. It's the best group we've had in the entire thing. Joshua Moore, Alvante Woodard, who's been really good. Brennan Eagles, solid. Mike Epps is up to a 98 at left tackle. Christian Jones, an 85, that's solid. Germay, 92. 92 for Ken Taylor, who went up six with the move to center. Right guard, Jeremy Duncan's an 80, that's fine. And then Reese Moore's a 92, so that's great. Byron Vaughns, who's been moved to left end, 88 overall. Michael Burke, 87. Kevin Nelson's at an 83. Johnny Fagan's at an 83. Tom Lewis is up to an 89 at left outside linebacker over right outside linebacker. James Parker at an 89. Michael Colbert at an 86. Micah Stevenson just behind. And we only have three cornerbacks who got boosted, but they are pretty good. Not the best group that we've had, but I mean, pretty much right up there. And then a free safety, Eric Warren, Toby Horner kind of competing for time. And then DeMarvion overshown up to a 91 overall back at strong safety. So I really do think we're in a good position. Will we make a real run at the national championship? I mean, we're going to have to really win all of our games, which feels doable given our roster, but I mean, you never know, man. This is our schedule. Leading off with Maryland, pretty legit. Baylor is ranked. Oklahoma ranked, obviously. TCU, and then the rest of the schedule doesn't look very tough right now, but it's the Big 12. I mean, anything can happen. Just got to uh, just win out. We're ranked top 10 to start the year. Let's get it going. All right. I already know Maryland's going to beat us, so that, that sucks. But I, I, I'm aware, so I know what's going to happen. Oh, we beat them. Texas in real life. Take notes, please. Rebuilding USC could be a fun one. Bring them back. The real ones I kind of want to focus on, like USC, Oregon, UCLA, Tennessee... USC beats us. You gotta be kidding me. And we lose to Baylor. Rip season. Jeez. And we beat Oklahoma. I'm I'm so confused. We beat ranked TCU. We might actually have a shot at this. Let's let's go ahead and see where we are. So we're number 16 right now. We're five and two. Where do we rank in the top 25? Well, like in you know, obviously I know where we rank, but where in relation to the rest of the Big 12? Baylor? What is up with Baylor, dude? Baylor, Oklahoma State are undefeated. What is happening in the top 25? Where's Oklahoma? Where's Oklahoma? Maybe Oklahoma sucks. I can't believe that Baylor uh, and whoever else I said undefeated. Number three, Oklahoma State. And we don't have Baylor on the schedule because they beat us already. A win over Oklahoma State here would be absolutely massive. And it's, I think it's very possible. Given our overalls at home at the DKR, Daryl K. Royal. I think we're going to win the game. You play to win the game. Ah, well, you know. I, I'm stupid. Crushed Iowa State. Not like it really matters at this point. Because we lost to Oklahoma State. Which is brutal. And we beat Kansas State by a field goal, but we saved our season. Oh, we went nine and three so far in the regular season, number 16. And some of these other teams in the Big 12, just, uh, I'm not sure what happened. They just, and Boise State went 12 and 0. What year is it? I guess Boise State's back in a big way as they are the number one team in the country. Oklahoma State went 11 and one. Baylor went 10 and two. Oklahoma 9 and 3 jumped us. How did Oklahoma get back in? I don't. Did I miss them the first? I must have, I guess. I don't know. Uh, so we missed out on the conference championship, but we get another good uh, bowl game berth. This time the Alamo Bowl. 
not not the top choice, but two Cotton Bowl wins and now an Alamo Bowl berth could be worse. Phil Jerkovic at Notre Dame wins the Heisman. We got Georgia in the Cotton Bowl. I thought we were going to go to the Alamo Bowl, but I guess we're in the Cotton Bowl, which is uh, way better. Way better. And we beat Georgia in the Cotton Bowl. So I think that's going to do it for me, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. This took me um, four and a half hours pretty much on the nose. So I hope it was worth it. This was a lot of fun. I'm a Texas Longhorns fan, so I really enjoyed doing this and seeing guys like Caden Surge develop. But that's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.